We've all seen the awesome things you can do with AI, but when it comes to video editing, it's harder than it looks. There are some guides out there that show you how to run your own N8N server so you can edit videos using powerful open source tools like FFmpeg, but running your own server is time consuming, technically challenging, and risky. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do video editing with N8N without hosting it yourself, meaning that you can simply use the safe and well-supported N8N cloud to automate all of your video editing. Before I give you a ton of background, let me quickly show you what you'll be able to do by the end of this video. With less than 10 minutes of setup, you'll be able to create an account on N8N Cloud and FFmpeg Micro and have a set of video editing automations that you can use for your business today. Without installing any software, you'll be able to create an N8N automation in N8N Cloud that can download videos, edit them, and post them somewhere like YouTube. You can combine videos, add music, do text overlays, trim and resize videos, and much, much more. So what is FFmpeg? FFmpeg is a powerful open source tool for video editing. You can use it to do things like combine videos with transitions or loop and create text with subtitles or overlays. You can trim videos, add audio, fade in and out, and do cropping and resizing and other types of common editing. N8N is a workflow automation tool. It lets you set up workflows to help automate tasks in your business, like generating videos, responding to customer emails, or alerting you when your competitors have promotions. You can integrate with tons of third-party services and APIs, and they can use AI prompts and even AI agents to help do powerful things. You have three main options for running N8N with FFmpeg. First is running N8N locally on your laptop. This is effectively free with direct FFmpeg access. However, it's harder to set up, requires manual upgrades and maintenance, and if you mess something up, like an upgrade, all of your automations stop. It's a single point of failure. If you don't have a solid way to do backups and restore things if something goes wrong, or if your laptop crashes, your automations are on hold, which means your business is on hold. I recommend this approach only if you're a small team on a very tight budget. Second is self-hosting N8N on a server like DigitalOcean or Railway. You get direct FFmpeg access and it's cheap for editing videos. Your whole team can access it, but it's harder to set up. You have to maintain it yourself, do manual upgrades, and if something breaks, again, your automations go down. I recommend this approach if you have a bigger team with a dedicated IT or DevOps person who can maintain the server for you and want to optimize your budget. The third option is to use N8N Cloud. You just sign up and you're ready to go in a couple of minutes. This is what I'm going to walk you through in this video today. It's easy for your team to access with low maintenance and low risk of downtime. The per video cost is higher than self-hosting, but total cost of ownership can be lower since you don't need to pay someone to install or maintain a server for you, especially if you're supporting multiple users. You have less versatility because you're not calling FFmpeg directly. You call it through an API, which may have restraints or limitations depending on the service you choose. But I recommend this approach for small to medium teams needing to move fast, especially if they don't have a dedicated technical person who can handle server maintenance and don't want the risk of downtime. N8N Cloud starts at $20 a month and has a free trial. And FFmpeg Micro has a generous free tier that will give you more than enough credit to get your automation set up. Many people stay on the free tier for quite a while, especially if they're going to only use it to edit short form videos. Okay, let's dive into setting up N8N along with our FFmpeg video editing automations. The first thing you'll do is set up an account on N8N Cloud if you don't have one already. To do this, go to n8n.io and click on Get Started. Fill out the registration form and then start your free trial. Next, you'll need the N8N automations that I've made available for free. Go to ffmpegmicro.com and then click on the training menu item. In there, you'll see a link to the resource page for this video. Click on that. And in there, you can download the resource file that I shared. It's a zip file with four N8N workflows inside of it. I'll put a link in the description for this video as well. In order to download the file, you'll have to either sign up or log in if you already have an FFmpeg Micro account. This is the API that we're going to use to do the FFmpeg uh, video editing, and it's necessary to set up an account. After downloading the file, it'll be a zip file. You'll unzip it, and you'll see four .json or JSON files. 
the main one, and then three sub workflows that I'll show you how to set up in a second. Next, you're going to take the workflows and import them into N8N. You can do this in your personal workspace, but I'd recommend setting up a project. Inside of your project, you can set up a new folder by clicking on this down icon here on the Create Workflow button and then selecting Create Folder. And then you can name that whatever you want. I'm just going to name it FFmpeg plus N8N Cloud Examples. And inside of the folder, you'll be ready to create your workflows. You can start by creating the main one by clicking on the Create Workflow button here. Once you do that, you'll want to click on this triple dot icon in the top right. And on that, you'll be able to say Import from File. You'll click on Import from File. And then you're going to select your main controller.json file and open that. And it should have the name already set up for you as soon as you import. We're going to go back to our folder by clicking on the folder name here. You, you'll want to make sure you save changes before you leave. And once you do that, you're going to want to create workflows for the other three .json files that we had. These are the sub workflows, which I'll explain in a second. So you're going to go ahead and click on the Create Workflow button again. And inside of there, you're going to, again, click on the triple dot up here and do an import file. Wait for transcode.json. I'm going to save that. I'm going to go back, create a new workflow, click the triple dot, import from file, uh, upload file.json, save that, import from file, and I'm going to select extract metadata.json and save that. And so now if I go back to my folder, it should look like this. I should have my main controller, and then three sub workflows set up inside of the folder. The next step is to go to FFmpeg Micro and click on the menu and then go to API keys here. And once you go there, you'll be able to see your API key, all your API keys, and you'll be able to create a new one. So click on the Create New Key button here. And once you click on that, you'll be able to create a new API key. So you'll scroll down, you'll give it a name. I'm going to call this uh, N8N Cloud. You give it read and write access. And if you want, you can put an expiration date. I'm just going to leave that blank. And as soon as you click on Create API Keys, it's going to generate a key and display that key here. I'm going to revoke this after I create the video, so you can't use it. But once you have this key, you'll want to copy it because you it will not be shown again after this page refreshes. So you might copy it and put it into a text file or somewhere where you have it, or just copy and use it immediately for the next step that we're going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and click Copy here. So I have the key. And then we're going to go back to N8N. And you're going to click on the down arrow here next to the main button. And we're going to go to Create Credential. And in here, we're going to search for a credential, we're going to search for bearer auth, B-E-A-R-E-R -E -R auth. This is where we're going to provide our API token for FFmpeg Micro. So once you come in here, you're going to paste in the API key in the bearer token field right here. And then you're going to scroll down and allowed HTTP request domains. You can leave this as all, but if you want it to be a little more secure, you can say specific domains. And then in here, in the allowed domains, you can type in uh, api.ffmpegmicro.com, and that'll limit the ability for this token to only be used on api.ffmpegmicro.com. You'll also want to name this credential as FFmpeg Micro Bearer Auth that looks exactly like this. And the reason for that is because that's exactly how I have it named inside of the automation that uh, you've downloaded and imported into your workflow. So just make sure you create and save that. Once you've set up your API key as a credential, go back to the main controller. And inside of the main controller, you can zoom in on any of these nodes that say transcode. And just double check that it's set up to have a generic auth type bearer auth. And then the bearer auth is pointing to your FFmpeg micro bearer auth. And that's it for the setup. It just took a few minutes. And now we can start editing videos with N8N and FFmpeg micro. Let's walk through the workflow. So the first thing you're going to do is click on this open chat. And once you click on that, you'll see a chat window that pops up down here. 
in here you can type help and once you type help you'll see a menu with a bunch of numbers you can type in the number that you want so if i type in one for example it'll run a demo of cropping a video i'm going to run through this one here 14 which is a text overlay so i type in 14 i hit enter and it runs it'll say text overlay example it'll provide the input file that it's using and then it'll continue running the workflow and if you scroll down you'll actually see it running inside of N8N. And once it's done, you'll see the output prints out. You can click on that and you'll see the actual output. So in this case, I took an input video and I did a text overlay on top of that. So let's walk through what these workflows look like. On the left side, you'll see that there's a main menu system. I have another video that I show how to actually set up a basic menu system like this. So this is basically where you go into the chat and you can type in the number and it'll run the automation for the workflow for the number that you've selected. It's a pretty simple setup and I won't walk through that. So let's walk through what happens on each step of this workflow. All of the workflows are pretty much the same. They start with a input and in the input, if you click on that, you'll see that it typically just sets up the names of the input videos or files or text that you're using for this video editing job. In this case, the input video here is just a public URL that I've provided. It's a video file that you can use for this automation. Next, we have our text overlay input chat, text overlay example, and then prints a link below it with the link to the video. Next up, we have a HTTP request that downloads the video. It just does an, a GET request to the video URL and downloads it, and then that becomes available within N8N Cloud. Next up, we have our text overlay uh, upload. This is a first sub workflow that we're running, and I'll drill down on that in a second, but this upload is where it's actually taking that video and it's uploading it to FFmpeg Micro so that we can use it inside of our video editing job. This sub workflow starts, it grabs some metadata about the video, it creates what's called a pre-signed URL. This just gives us a URL that we can use to upload the video to a cloud storage directory. And then we actually upload the file to that URL that it provides us. And then we confirm that it was uploaded and we get the name of the URL for the video that's been uploaded to FFmpeg Micro. And the next thing we want to do is actually run the video editing job, or uh, which is called transcoding. And so we're going to click on that. And you'll see inside of here, we run a post request. This is just a, another HTTP request. We run a post request to api.ffmpegmicro.com. And then this is the endpoint v1 transcodes. And we set up bearer auth with it's pointing to the API key that we have. The input here, you'll see that inside of here, we have inputs to the file that we have uploaded, and then we're giving it a bunch of options and telling it how to edit our video. I won't walk through these in detail. This is all covered in the API docs for FFmpeg Micro, and these examples should give you an, a great starting point on how to get started. After we've transcoded the video or run the video editing job, the next thing we're going to do is wait for that to happen because the job runs in the background. It might take 20, 30, 40 seconds. It runs in the background. And then this next sub workflow, the wait for transcode sub workflow, will actually uh, do polling and wait until that job is completed and then get the output file name and give that back to us. You'll see that it starts. It's polling for the job to see if the job is complete. That's using an ID that was generated when we kicked off the job. And then it'll keep going in a loop and it'll wait. And if it comes back and the job still hasn't completed, it'll go through that loop again. And if the job has completed, then it'll come over here and give you the actual URL for the output video. Finally, we show the link to the output video in the N8N chat so you can easily click on it and see it. And that's all you need, just a few minutes of setup and you should now be able to try all of these powerful video editing capabilities of FFmpeg directly from N8N Cloud with no self-hosting. If you want support for how to use this automation, you can join us in the App Builders Academy on school.com and we have conversations on there. You can post questions and we have a classroom where we have material on how to do a lot of these automations. We also have weekly meetups where you can come in and ask me questions and I'm glad to 
help answer them. And this is a growing and thriving community with a lot of people engaged and asking questions about how to run automations and how to build your own applications. I uh, hope to see you inside.